He made it, barely. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Taconic Roadrunners for the jacket. Yeah, Taconic. Hello. You barely made it. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> I uh, was getting a little, get a little warm up. <laughs> Perfect. Steve's in the house. But here we go. Just running a long time with you, buddy. Cruising. Yeah, man. You all know Steve. Steve's been on the vlog a lot. Oh, yeah. Not for a while though. It's been a little while. I've been hiding. Yeah, I'm getting, getting work done. May see through the prescription. <laughs> you see 10 times better than these glasses. Magnified. We're just cruising everybody. Almost home. Six miles easy on a Sunday recovery. Probably about eight, 8, 15 miles my guess. That's my guess. 745. <laughs> 745. Something like that. Average, average. Let's go get this knee looked at. Come on now. There's the boys. Let's get this knee looked at. Hello. We're home. Oh, is Michael sleeping? <laughs> you do your thing. I try to do, I try to, it's like, you just gotta time. It's like for this, this is just as important as the running, you know? Taking care of the body afterward, cause I run in high volume. <laughs> yeah, so this thing is amazing. I must say, when I stretch my quads, usually it helps the knee feel better. But it, it, it hurts right after, but then it usually feels better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, Steve, here we go. All right. Let's try and break this down. So Seth, runner's knee, Yeah. which is called what? Patella femoral pain syndrome is the actual. Patella femora? Femoral. Femoral pain syndrome. Kneecap. Boom. Leg bone. Something's going on there that's not quite my working pain, right. My pain and probably your pain too is right about here and it hurts the most for me when I'm running slow or when I'm walking up and down stairs or squatting, so. So Seth asked me to try to talk about this. I feel like the big takeaways are we really gotta have this be a catch-all diagnosis and that be, everything else needs to kind of be ruled out and in order to ensure that this is actually what uh, you're dealing with. And also I should have said, what are your credentials? Oh yeah, student of physical therapy. One more semester left. He's a student, so Steve and I ran at CU together back in the day, and so Steve is in physical therapy school, mm -hmm. and he's got one semester left. But uh, yeah, there's a new study that just came out, or mainly a, a new collective... Uh, gr grouping of Yeah, studies. grouping of how well our evidence is known about patellofemoral pain syndrome. So I was just going through it here, and um, we don't really have much of a diagnostic way to determine if it is PFPS or runner's knee or patellofemoral pain syndrome. But we do know that um, in most cases, you have difficulty or discomfort with squatting, going up and down stairs, as well as um, di difficulty with, what did I say? Full knee extension? Yeah, full this way. Okay, full flexion of the knee. So if you are running and you're finding the, the pain is going to be kind of toward the front end of this tendon here with the kneecap. Um, you also got to think about whether or not it could be uh, uh, fat yeah, fat pad syndrome. You have a fat pad underneath there that can get pretty aggravated. And if you're younger, um, adolescent developing uh, strong quadricep muscles, you also have to think about Osgood Schlatter's. If you've got a predominant tibial plateau or tibial um, uh, tuberosity here, if that's kind of poking out more so, and that's tender to touch, you might be looking at Osgood Schroeder's disease, and that is another and one to look at. Yeah, I should mention on the vlog, I've said in the last like 10 days that my knees felt tight, and uh, remember I was saying that last week, so it's been feeling tight, and remember I'm transitioning basically exclusively away from vertical gain, so my quads are not being worked as much, 
And I'm wondering if that might be contributing a little bit to what I'm feeling with the runner's knee in the front of the knee. So anyway, just it's, so. It's a good insight. And uh, they do show that the uh, there is a correlation with people that have weakened knee extensor muscles to be more susceptible to this, uh, this knee pain. Question of the day. Hopefully everyone can hear me because Steve has the mic. Question of the day. Who has suffered from runner's knee? And what did you do to help alleviate the pain? And did it go away eventually? Well, hopefully it did. But what were the steps that you took? Um, so that's the question of the day, all about runner's knee. Many of us have suffered from this. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So that's the question of the day. It's like a hot topic in the running world. And I, it is recommended to reduce your training. I'm kind of in a tough spot right now with Houston, about five weeks away. So I'm, I think I can train through it, but we're just going to take it one day at a time. Yeah. So, I mean, like Seth mentioned, as, I mean, really as his friend and as a student in this field of wanting to try to figure out more how to help someone in this situation, obviously if the demand is, is uh, not let, letting you reduce the amount of mileage um, or take some time off, um, it is important to figure out have we addressed any sort of gait changes? Has there been anything in the past that we've, um, uh, or anything that's changed since uh, the symptoms have come on? Yeah. And so whether or not you are experiencing these symptoms, I think the kind of the good conservative thing is to think about how strong are my quads, how strong are my hip muscles? And if we're moving in a one singular plane with running, oftentimes our lateral hips are not really working um, the way they should be. So there's a few things that we can kind of show you to uh, even work on exercises to help yeah. prevent, uh, prevent this from happening again. And KT taping is good for reducing the symptoms, but it's not treating the overall cause. So overall, it does show good evidence that it helps unload. Um, and if it works for you, uh, try different techniques. There's good sources out there to kind of self-teach you. Do you have two or three recommendations for me for exercises that I could do either in the gym or here to help potentially alleviate and maybe even make it go away? Absolutely. There's there's kind of an approach where we can do a loaded position where we're standing on it with kind of gravity in our body weight and an unloaded position. So you can tolerate, if you can tolerate loaded, that's where I would start, but they don't really have evidence showing one is more effective than the other. I mean, simple knee extension exercises where we can really track uh, that knee coming straight up uh -huh. and whether or not um, you find relief with weight or without weight you can begin if you have an ankle weight that would definitely be helpful but you can start just to fatigue without any kind of weight just your running shoes enough to yeah. kind of add um, straightening out that yeah. might be a, a good start yeah so just to fatigue as you're maybe even holding it up there squeezing that quadricep muscle just an easy yeah and okay. that might be a good way to start. The next one, um, well, you can just start here. You're gonna squeeze those glutes and raise them up, yeah. making sure that the hips aren't, aren't rocking. Okay. And you're gonna hold that for 10 seconds. And again, I like going to fatigue. Not everyone is going to uh, tolerate this as well. Yeah. If you are, you can uh, straighten one leg out and really isolate each leg. Nice. The Godfather is helping this knee. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna win. It's persistence, Oof. and patience, and consistency. <laughs> That's All good. the time. All the time. All right. All right, everyone. Just putting a bow on today's discussion about patello femoral pain, i.e., runner's knee. And again, I'll be interested to see how many people have suffered from this injury. Now, oh, by the way, it's freezing out. So I got, I'm gonna keep my hat on in the studio tonight. Um, I And Steve, right at the end, before he had to take off, thank you, Steve, for the insights. Uh, and again, Steve and I, we're not doctors. If you have serious knee pain, go to the doctor, go get it checked out. But I don't have seri serious knee pain, but I do have some knee pain. And I'm gonna give you a couple thoughts on what is working for me, for my runner's knee. Uh, and I've only had it for about seven days. But at the same time, it's a little, okay, I don't want to say it's exciting, but I get, I get so many questions on all, all the social media about runner's knee, and I have to politely tell people that I'm sorry. I don't know, I, I, I don't know what to tell you because I've never had runner's knee 
until now. So I've had IT band issues back in high school. So on the outside of my knee. So I have a little experience there. I consider myself, unfortunately, an expert in plantar fasciitis. And I definitely know all about stress fractures. Uh, that was okay. PF and stress fractures are basically my go-to running injuries. But runner's knee is new. And now I know what it feels like. Now listen, I haven't been to the doctor, doctor to get it fully diagnosed. But all the research I've done, it's, it's, it, it sounds just like runner's knee or patellofemoral pain. I'm doing ultrasound. Supposedly, there's research out there that ultrasound is not um, overwhelmingly uh, known to help runner's knee. But I've got this little guy, and again, if it brings more blood flow to that area, I guess I'm willing to try it. I'll just put it out there. Um, what else is working? So. Also, oh yeah, elevating the leg, okay? So laying down and getting the knee above the heart. So lay on your couch and then elevate the knee up on some pillows. That seems to be helping. Oh yeah, and then the most helpful has been the KT tape, all right? So that's what Steve was doing at the end there. Um, and now, so it's five hours later since Steve has left. My knee feels amazing. I'm just putting it out there, like it feels amazing. And, uh, like, and I don't know if it's the, so Steve was also showing me some different, um, I don't want to call them exercises, but rehab to do in the house on my own. And so I did a little bit of that. I'm going to go inside and do some more before hitting the sack. And I don't know, the knee feels a little bit better right now compared to, let's say this morning, because on the run today with Steve, it was a little tight, a little tender, just putting it out there. Last but not least, and then I'll sign off is that the slower I run, the more it hurts. The faster I run, it feels better. So from what I understand, it's a tracking issue uh, from your kneecap down that tendon, and then you have these guide rails, as I think Steve alluded to in there, and it can get a little offline, that patella tendon down the front of your knee, and that's what causes this pain. So I'm learning alongside you, and that's why the title of the vlog is a runner's knee discussion starter okay well, we don't i don't have all the answers but but all the veterans out there i bet you can give some insights and help all of us rookies with runner's knee i am one of them but now i join the ranks and we march on and it's not going to get me down tomorrow i hope to get actually i don't hope i will get into the pool and the sauna and i think that non-pounding uh environment and movement through the pool some aqua jogging should help as well all right we're here together. We got this. Runners, knee, runners, unite, onward and upward. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We're going to toss it back to the last vlog that we talked about running injuries on the right. And you know what? We'll also do the one on the left. So if you have running injuries, whether it's whatever the case may be, there's so many out there, go to either one of these vlogs, check it out, and you might be able to learn a thing or two about some home remedies. All right, there you go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.